Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we are taking a look at a new release of Niagara 4 that came out earlier uh, this week. And we're going to take a look at the new features and what it brings for us um, that maybe you can leverage in some of your new projects. So let's jump into this presentation and take a look. All right, so as a quick summary, we've got a few different things that were added as features in 4.14. Nothing huge and earth shattering, but some really nice features, one in particular that I will uh, highlight at the end that I think is going to be very helpful for those of you who have some installations maybe in uh, more security conscious um, job sites. So uh, as always, Niagara is always adding in uh, new HTML5 web views to try to get everything that's available to you in Workbench, uh, have full parity um, with what you do through the web browser. So that's the first one that we see there. I'll highlight that a little bit. Everything in bold here we'll, we'll look at a little bit more. Uh, next, we've got a BACnet protocol revision update. So basically this is just the specification for BACnet protocol itself, uh, the revision number that uh, Tritium is using now, now they meet the revision six, 16 um, specification. And next we have the certificate signing service. It's a new service that was added in that allows for you to automate some of your signing processes um, in a really nice way. Kind of similar, I guess, a little bit to the kind of thing that's available um, if you're at all familiar with uh, the typical certificate usage in a web server application where you use something like Let's Encrypt to automatically do your certificate signing for you. With the certificate signing service, you can sort of bundle this kind of functionality together with your project. If you have, say, a supervisor and a bunch of JSs, you can utilize that um, in those applications. Next, we have the brick schema for tagging. Uh, it's a schema that's, uh, I don't want to say competitor, but it's another option instead of Haystack. So that is now available in Niagara 4 and 4.14. And we have uh, our security dashboard. We can now use that in a tiered application with uh, the system DB and that kind of thing. Uh, then we have something that I think I, I mentioned this earlier that I think is a, a really cool feature and it's super, super easy to implement, which is uh, GAuth for two-factor authentication. Uh, that is now available in 4.14. And you might think, ooh, that sounds like it'll be difficult to set up and run. Uh, I'm going to need internet access, all that stuff. Not the case. Um, we'll have more detail on that later in this video, but then we're also going to do a separate video specifically about that setup process and making that work. And then we've got some uh, new SAML authentication types that are available to us as well, um, but we're not really going to dig into that so much in this video. So for our new HTML5 views, the big one here is that our driver manager is now fully HTML5 along with our Niagara network history import exports and schedule import exports. Then if you're used to doing any kind of BACnet exports, that is available to you within the HTML5 as well. If you're using RDBMS to export out histories or import histories, now you can do that from the web browser. Um, and Modbus network, device manager, point manager, and LAN network, basically all of your manager views that are on the LAN network itself, they're all available. And then you've got a couple other odds and ends ones, the on-call service, if you're using that at all to uh, manage where uh, alarming and things should go based on who's on call, that is available. Weather manager, category service, and then a really, really important one that I think... Um, everyone should be using, especially if you're, you're doing big projects, Niagara provisioning, uh, that is now available through the web browser uh, to make your life a little bit easier if you are trying to set up provisioning or set up steps in your provisioning processes that is now available to you directly in the browser. So now we get to the certificate signing service. 
as I mentioned before, this is sort of an automation for signing certificates and renewing certificates um, from a supervisor or from a station. It doesn't necessarily need to be a supervisor, but I think in most use cases, uh, where you've got a bunch of JSES, you've probably also got a supervisor in there as well. So this lets you set up that supervisor so that it can sign and renew the certificates in uh, your JSES automatically, uh, just with a little bit of setup to make that happen, and then a certificate authority certificate that's set up at the supervisor as well. And obviously, this lets you do some more uh, common uh internet security practices that are now uh, popular nowadays. If you go to say Google or any major website, you're gonna see that their certificates are no longer valid for a full year. They're most likely valid for something like 90 days instead. Uh, this would let you do that because your certificate is gonna be automatically uh, signed and renewed by your supervisor, whichever station you set up to do that. And because of all of this, it's highly customizable. You can set this up so that it does it automatically for, say, a certificate that's in your web service, um, or it only does it for certain JSES, that kind of thing. And we can use leverage, we can leverage provisioning to push down this setup um, to a bunch of JSES so that we don't need to go to them individually to get that initial piece set up. So we'll have a much deeper breakdown of this service here in, in a little bit because it, it seems like there's a lot of... Um, confusion and certificates in general are, are just a headache. Uh, so anything that we can do to make that a little bit easier, especially if you're on a larger project where you've got a lot of JSES and a lot of certificates that you're managing, this will be a massive, massive value for you. And then the last piece, and that's, this is the piece that I think... Um, there's no reason, the way I look at it, there's no reason why you shouldn't be implementing this if you're using 4.14 uh, because it is so easy to do, which is two-factor authentication using uh, Google Authenticator. Uh, it's time-based. So it it obviously requires the time in your JACE or your supervisor and the time on the device that you're going to be uh, authenticating through to be correct. But because of that, it does not require internet at all, not on the setup process, not on getting the uh, authenticator set up on the end device, strictly done based on time. So the process is very, very simple to set up, it just requires you to have that authenticator app on your phone or your computer. Most people probably already have these because uh, banks, sort of, this has become the, the standard practice, as well as for a lot of things just like Google, if you have a Gmail account. Um, so you can use any authenticator app to make that happen, any that supports TOTP, which is time-based one-time passwords. And the authenticator can be set up directly in Workbench or from a web browser, uh, which makes that process a little bit easier. And you can do it when you're initially setting up the user, or you can have it prompt the user the first time they sign in to set up their authenticator and their one-time passwords. So that is a quick run through of the new features that are available to you in 414. Right now, 414 is only available through Tritium and Vicon um, as far as the lines that we carry, but Honeywell, Johnson, all of them will be coming out with it here in the near future once they run it through their tests to make sure all of their uh, specific software works with it properly as well. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And um, check us out at birdieprecision.com or store.birdieprecision.com for any of your Niagara needs. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.